Hi everyone, in a few weeks the Abattoir of Zir event is coming out. If you have not seen anything about this yet, we're gonna have this overview post here. But this is something that Blizzard had announced at BlizzCon. I've actually played it a little bit when I was there at BlizzCon as well. I had some exclusive um, like preview and I was also giving some feedback to the devs. But uh, this is going to be basically like the Abel 3 Greater Rifts. Just extremely hard. So if you know the Abel 3, um, then you're gonna be familiar with this, but if not, there's going to be uh, like a random rift basically that has uh, random maps, random monsters, random bosses. And you go in there and it kind of starts out where T100 Lambert Dungeons leave you off. It has its own tier progression. There are 25 levels and it gets harder and harder by a significant amount every single tier. So it's not just like going from, you know, tier 99 to 100 or so in Nightmare Dungeons. This is a significant jump every single time with what sounds like a basically unbeatable last level. So I think the devs actually want you to try to like really chew on this and potentially not have a chance to actually finish this even with the best builds in the game. So this is kind of what we're looking at here. And this means that they need to make a build that has uh, insane amounts of survivability. First of all, you need to be able to easily survive T100 Nightmare Dungeons. And then it's a DPS check. There's gonna be a timer and a progression bar and if you fail the timer and you don't finish the run, then this is over. So you need to hit the DPS check, basically. And what this means is that, well, I've done this for like a decade in Diablo 3, basically. I've been pushing Greater Rifts to the maximum with like hundreds of different builds, basically. Um, this means that it's going to feel a lot like D3 Greater Rift pushing on the higher end. And this usually means that uh, you have to do really massive pulls and try to maximize the DPS by just hitting more targets. So I'm going to show this off here in like uh, a D3 run that I've done, um, like, you know, this season, for example, when I got my world first. And um, this is usually how this looks like. You try to go in there, you try to like pull many enemies together, and you need to be able to like actually survive large pulls against the elites, against many enemies at once, and try to deal more and more damage as you go higher by just adding more monsters to the pull. So this is kind of like the strategy, how this usually goes. And this will probably be quite similar in Abattoir of Zir. Now, the Abattoir Force mechanics are a bit different. So they are, it's like a leash mechanic. You can't just pull enemies along infinitely and just like pull the entire dungeon together or something like that. Uh, you can only do this for like a few screens, but it will st still feel quite similar to how the Abattoir Free pushing works, I believe. And this means that we're going to run into a major problem at bosses. So this is something that uh, was kind of like a rookie mistake that they've done in Diablo 3, where they just scaled up HP and damage values more and more with every single tier. And then eventually we got into a situation where people just reached a boss fight and the bosses had so much HP that you just can't kill them because on a single target you can't improve your DPS like you can do with an AoE fight where you just pull more monsters together. So people are going to reach the boss and you're going to fight it for like, you know, half of the timer or something like three, four or five minutes or whatever, unless you have like some extremely high single target build. So this is probably what you're looking at. And this means that if you're trying to make your own build work for this Abattoir of Zir and Blizzard is not like, you know, interfering a little bit or like changing the scaling on bosses, for example, or, you know, somehow giving you like a fighting chance against those higher level bosses, you will need extreme amounts of single target damage to even kill the boss in time at all, basically. So this is kind of what happened in Diablo 3. And there was a solution in Diablo 3, it was called Bane of the Stricken, that, well, we don't have in Diablo 4. But if you, if you know this gem here, or if, if you don't, uh, it looks like this. Basically, it allows you to kill bosses by giving like a stacking damage buff. So this was like the Band-Aid solution that um, Blizzard used in Diablo 3 way back, like, you know, <laughs> seven years ago or something like that. And to this day, this is like the most important gem to have when you do a Greater Rift push, because it's the only way that you can actually kill a boss in time, for almost every single build, at least. So we'll see how this will play out in our 12 Zia, but I expect we're going to run exactly into those issues. And that means uh, you have to find some really creative solutions around this problem. And I think there is one that is probably very overlooked that I want to get up with this video. And that is uh, this little weapon here, the Ahavarion Spear of Lycander. So this is kind of like a meme weapon that a lot of people, you know, always ask me, like, is there a build for this? Uh, does this have any reason to exist? Is this useful? 
And the answer is, I think, yeah, I think this is going to be actually really busted in Abattoir of Zia. The reason for that is that there are some shrines that actually scale with the monster level or the health, I'm not sure exactly, but they do scale with the content that you are doing. And they do less damage when you do low level monsters and more damage when you do when they fight high level monsters. And you can see this in action here, for example, this is a blast wave shrine. And you might have noticed this yourself, like when you um, use your condo shrine, a blaster shrine or an artillery shrine, they do extreme amounts of damage, no matter what, basically, especially if you have a bunch of like already existing like damage multipliers for your character. I think they do scale with those. So for example, in the barb, if you have a lot of like damage while berserking, it's a pretty universal damage multiplier. I think this should scale this up. But in general, you can see that they do insane amounts of damage here. I just did a casual 250 million at one shot this uh, yeah, tier 86 dungeon boss. And uh, this goes even further when you go to higher level monsters to the point where you can just like defeat those dungeon bosses in a matter of seconds if you have artillery shrine or blast wave or conduit. So this is why I think that our variant is actually going to be a really broken item. Unfortunately, only two classes can actually use it. Only druids and sorcerers can uh, do this. But um, there is actually like a strategy behind this where you can just like leave an elite like at the end of the run when you're like almost ready to spawn the boss. You can kill the elite, get the shrine effect, and then you have a three out of seven chance to get one of those three shrines and just decimate the boss. And I believe that's probably going to be one of the main strategies on the higher end on how you can actually cheese those boss fights basically and just skip like a five minute boss fight for example. So we have this little shrine overview post here and uh, there are in total seven shrines that exist and I'm not sure if our variant can give you any of them. I have not actually tried it myself. However, I guess it can. So there's artillery, blast wave and conduit. Those are the three big ones. There's channeling, that is kind of okay, I guess. There's greed, that is completely useless. Lethal can be okay. And protection is also not bad. But the ones that really help you out are the three that I mentioned. And uh, I think that um, if there's not really like um, like anything that prevents you from item swapping, for example, this might be exactly the strategy to use. Or you could potentially even just like swap to this and you know defeat an elite and then swap back to a regular weapon and you're going to have the shrine, plus you have your full power set up where you have your big weapon equipped. And then every 30 seconds when the cooldown is over, you can swap into this again, kill another elite, and then get like a shrine. So right now in the game, we don't really have any type of content that is like high end enough for this to really shine. But I think that when the Avatar of Zia comes around, this is going to be one of the, you know, like the carries basically for at least druids and sorceresses. And I'm quite excited to see how this will play out. It still means you still have to defeat an elite on your own though. You have to be able to actually fight elites. You can't just go in with like, you know, an extremely weak character and completely rely on those shrines. It is, you know, still quite RNG. You know, three out of seven is like, yeah, 42% chance or something to get one of those three like I win buttons basically. And if you actually rely on it on you know the final elite kill to spawn the boss to then kill the boss with the shrine yeah sometimes you just won't get it and you will fail so this is how it's gonna work and well this means that in general shrine fishing is kind of back in Diablo 4 which is something that at least for now I was very happy that we didn't have that in Diablo 4 uh, compared to like in Diablo 3 where those shrines here they really play a big role or these pylons here they're called in Diablo 3 they can be very impactful and similar to like, for example, Artillery Shrine, Cornet Shrine, this stuff existed here as well. And it was really dominating um, how you have to play a Rift and how you actually approach a high-end push. And when you click them and sometimes you get unlucky, you don't get them. So this would me usually mean that you fail the run. And I think it's going to be quite similar on the higher end in Avatar of Zier when we get there. It may also very well be possible that the Avatar of Zier gives you shrines themselves. So not just the Avarion, but you may actually be able to save up some of those shrines and then use them later for, you know, the right situation for the boss or for whatever. And we might actually have exactly <laughs> the other free girl that was pushing again with all that RNG, with those boss one shots and cheese strats with uh, pylons. So, this is just something that, well, is quite theoretical right now, but I think relatively likely to happen. And I want to prepare you guys for it.
And what this means is that if you play a Druid or a Sorg, you definitely want to hold onto this thing, or if you're planning to do more Druid runs to grind up some Uber Uniques, well, you might want to try to get this one, because who knows, maybe it's going to turn out extremely potent to actually, you know, cheese your way to the highest tiers. So this is it. This is what I wanted to share here. Let me know what you think about it. If you have it, I would really like to hear your opinions about, you know, how it works and how it feels. And, um, you know, I have not been playing with it myself very much, but I think it's going to be <laughs> very surprising how strong it's going to be. And I'm going to leave you with this here. I wish you good luck when the Avatar of Azir comes out. I'm re really excited to see like how the different builds will perform and how it's going to feel in general. I'm very excited for it. I've been preparing for a while already and I will continue to do so for the next weeks until it comes out and then we're going to mega blast Avatar and see how it goes. So that's it for me. Hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys next time.